Um, isn't it a little bit ironic? I mean, Judge Benson was um, <coughs> knocked off the bench by Donna Hitchens uh, 16 years ago or so uh, for the reason that he was a conservative. Her argument was he was a Republican white male and, uh, and that she would bring uh, sexual orientation diversity to the bench. But in the end, it, it kind of turned out that in this case, the conservative white guy was the one who, well, this, who you remember giving you the fair trial. Right, and what we were discussing is judicial demeanor, and I, I'm, and that's what, that, that's actually the point, isn't it? It's, that's a judge, when he uh, sits on the bench, when he puts on that black robe, he's not a Republican, he's not a conservative, he's not a liberal, he's an independent and an impartial uh, arbiter. And so, um, so in those, these were serious cases, and we had issues uh, with, during voir dire with jurors, and, and because he is conservative, he had issues with some of my questions, but he was fair. And he knew what the ultimate, his ultimate role was, and he allowed me to ask questions, especially in the sexual assault case, that, that he obviously wasn't comfortable with, but, he, but the, he did what he was supposed to do. And so, really just makes my point. And, and, um, oh, in terms of Judge Mellon's demeanor, um, is your uh, perception of that based on what you've read or based on kind of word of mouth reputation around the courthouses or based on, you probably haven't had a trial in front of him unless you happened to when he was in the criminal courthouse, but I don't know if you've observed him in court or anything. I've, I've observed him in court. I've uh, um, had long, long discussions. This is something that I've been discussing for years, and people have asked me uh, what, when that incident happened mm -hmm. with the public defender's office. And most of my most of my colleagues knew that I it's always been my ambition to run for judge. Mm -hmm. And so when, when that incident happened, a lot of them suggested to me that that I should run against him. Um, and uh, so it's something that. Um, that I've been aware of for a long time, and I've had uh, a lengthy discussion with uh, the the attorneys that were involved in the incident that was reported, um, and I've discussed uh, I've had discussions with um, other court staff as well. Have you heard anything since he's gone over to civil in those regards, or is it is are the two benches or two bars kind of so divided that you're um, that you wouldn't be likely to hear much about. No, actually, before um, before I made my final decision, I actually called civil attorneys that I knew and I asked them if they'd ever appeared in front of him, and I asked him uh, mm -hmm. some questions, and and I got the same the same responses. So I'm I'm kind of curious about um, you know as as you know in the forum and um, Judge Mellon um, he seems very un unapologetic about his manner and and. <coughs> he says that his he may be misinterpreted, but he he you know acts he 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 engages with people the way he does to get to the point of things, and you know he wants to move things along and not waste people's time, and he wants people to be prepared. And I'm just wondering, um, you know, where's that line uh, where it becomes uh, a, a problem with their ability to be a judge, and and why do you think Judge Millen has perhaps crossed that line? I want to respect the candidate and not say, um, and I also respect the bench, so I don't want to say anything disrespectful about the judge. There is, I think, if there's an issue with judicial demeanor, I think um, the, the process is inefficient. It ceases to be efficient. Mm -hmm. And there, there isn't, uh, in, in an article, so I, I, I think I can talk about it, it's, it was in the newspaper. Um, and there was uh, there was some problems with the sheriff's department, with uh, I believe using the emergency button to get the attention of the sheriffs, and uh, the the emergency button when it's pressed, uh, it requires that all the the deputy bailiffs leave the courtroom that they're in, and at a very quick pace run through the halls to the courtroom where the button has has been pressed, which is. It's, it's, it's dangerous. I actually was hit by a door by a bailiff running through a door once, um, and it it's not efficient. It's not an efficient way. 
apparently when they arrived, he said he just wanted the attention of the bailiff. Um, and there was a, another incident about not signing the appropriate paperwork so that the sheriff's department could take the, uh, the custody back up to the jail, and, and the paperwork then had to go to the uh, criminal court's master calendar judge, and he signed it. So that's not an efficient way to run a courtroom. And uh, it, the criminal court is, ha has enough problems, and you can't have a judge that, that isn't respecting the, the process. And, and the people that, that work for, you know, work within the courthouse. And so, um, what are you, why, why do you think the Commission on Judicial Performance hasn't uh, ever publicly said anything about its behavior? Do you think they've looked at these incidents and found them? Uh, I'm just curious about that, the, the one in particular with the custody uh, defendant. I mean, that's, that would be, uh, that's not for me to speculate. What I looked at it, and this is an electable office. I looked at it, and um, and that's why I decided to run and, and, and run against him. But it would, it's not for me to speculate why why other people haven't looked at it. At the uh, Bar Association of San Francisco forum the other night, uh, you mentioned Earl Warren as a, uh, a judicial hero along with your father. Um, couldn't you know going back to something you said earlier? Couldn't Earl Warren had been regarded as a troublemaker. Didn't people say, well, there was an activist judge and a, and a troublemaker? So why is that necessarily bad? I mean, isn't well, any judge who makes an unpopular ruling usually branded as an activist and a troublemaker? They're, that's exactly how you use the word branded, but for, um, and I think Earl Warren looked at complex issues and uh, began the process of, at, at first principles and then to still sound sound decisions out of that but and if you choose to brand him but but for a candidate or, or, or judge to declare that that's the process that he's um, that that's how he's going to uh, uh, operate when he puts that black robe on that's that's totally different I mean you can look at someone's body of work and say um, based on your ideology based on your um, your values that the decisions that that particular judge came up with is, are active you know he was an activist judge or or such but you can't as a judicial candidate declare that I'm not going to follow the rule of law especially when you're running for the lower court and the lower court uh, the lower court follows the higher court precedent faithfully whether you agree with it or not whether you would have decided it differently that's the role of the judge at the Superior Court level. And so there's a, there's a distinction, I believe. Um, there is a uh, well-documented backlog um, of cases at the Superior Court right now, especially uh, misdemeanor trials. Um, I'm wondering some, what are some specific things that, that you would do uh, to try to uh, help that, improve that situation?